क्लास एलेवेंथ कॉमर्स बिजनेस स्टडीज इट इज चैप्टर नंबर वन इवोल्यूशन एंड फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ बिजनेस लेक्चर नंबर फाइव मेजर एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड इम्पोर्ट्स हेयर द नेम ऑफ मेजर मेन एक्सपोर्टेड आइटम्स एंड इम्पोर्ट आइटम्स इट इज रिटर्न मेजर इम्पोर्ट्स एंड एक्सपोर्ट्स मेजर आइटम्स नेम्स दे हैव बीन रिटर्न विच वर द पार्ट ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड इम्पोर्ट्स एक्सपोर्ट्स कंजिस्टेड ऑफ स्पाइसिस वीट शुगर इंडिगो ओपीएम सीसम ऑयल कॉटन पैरेट लाइव एनिमल्स एंड एनिमल प्रोडक्ट्स स्किन फर्स हॉर्न्स टॉटॉइज शेल्स सिंपल शेल्स सफायर्स क्रिस्टल्स ग्रीनाइट्स एंड कॉपर एक्सेट्रा मीन्स द नेम्स दे आर रिटर्न फॉर विच द एक्सपोर्ट वॉज डन imports included horses animal products chinese silk wine gold silver tin copper rubies coral glass etc many more items were the part of imports a few name has been written and these exports and imports they took place in ancient india position of indian subcontinent in world economy the time duration is 1 ad to 1991 between the 1st and 7th centuries india is estimated to have the largest economy of the ancient and medieval world point number 2 the country was often referred to as swarnabhumi and swarnadeep in the writings of many travelers it is a travelers despite the growing commercial sector it is evident that the 18th century india was far behind western up western europe western europe in technology innovation and ideas point number 4 with the increasing control of the east india company causing lack of freedom see the role of east india company it had been increased and because of that increasing role what happened that the freedom it hampered hamper hona mane rukna sazadi mein rukawat aayi with the increasing control of the east india company causing lack of freedom and no occurrence of agricultural and scientific revolution revolution ka matlab hai bahut nayi cheezon ko istemal karke bahut badhiya paidavar hona agriculture mein so that all was you know seized that all they could not do because the role of east india company was very much more east india company was never in favor to give the freedom to indians india begins to reindustrialize after independence the process of rebuilding the economy started and india adopted centralized planning centralized money there one main place was made and all the plannings which were supposed to be done all those plannings they were done on that only main area the first five year plan was implemented in 
these all are the factors that explain that the india had begun to be the best industrial country india begins to reindustrialize third number proper importance was given for the establishment of modern industries modern technological and scientific institutions means their other names are written those were given more importance without scientific institutions any innovation could not take place without technology how the day how the country could do progress point number 4 despite all efforts the indian economy could not develop at a rapid money fast pace money speed even after doing all hard work indian economy was not in position that could get more speed this point number 4 despite all efforts the indian economy could not develop at a rapid pace point number 5 lack of capital formation see capital formation is done by public capital formation is done by the borrowers when we discuss about capital it can be own money it can be borrowed money when they all are made together it is known as capital formation there was lacking in capital formation and what is the reason rise in population huge expenditure on defense and inadequate infrastructure which were the major reasons it means the at in ancient time the india india had money but because of more population because of more expenditure on defense and inadequate inadequate infrastructure there was no capital formation and without capital nothing can be done point number 6 as a result india relied heavily on borrowings india ke logon ko india ko udhar par bahut nirbhar rehna pada bahut udhar par from foreign sources and the money that they wanted to borrow that source was foreign foreign money videshon se udhar lena pada and finally agreed to economic liberalization in 1991 in 1991 the government of india took the decision for economic liberalization point number 7 the indian economy is one of the fastest growing economies in the world today and they are preferred by fdi destination fdi means foreign direct investment and listen to your homework chapter number 1 you will write see i ask you to write daily many of you you will not be having the book so <coughs> whatever is taught in video it is your duty bete to write all and to learn also thank you so much